Hey guys, we're the Happily Ever After Four. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about um, the new Disney Genie and Genie Plus, what that means and what that's gonna look like for the future. The biggest question is what is it? It's something totally new. Um, it's gonna be, there's multiple facets. So there's Disney Genie, right? Yeah, which is free to anybody who uses Essentially what it is, is it's an addition to the My Experience app that you use at Disney World when you plan your vacation and all of that. Which is really great because you can put in your ticket numbers and then um, it used to be able to manage all your Fast Passes, um, which are now um, going away as a, permanently. Yeah, it has a dining, dining options, reservations. reservations and options. Um, uh, it's your key to your room if you're staying on property. It's your ticket. Um, it's for photo pass. You can attach a credit card to it and use that to pay mm -hmm. instead of having to carry your wallet into the parks, yeah. which is one of my favorite features. Well, yes, that. But I, we like the magic bands because yes. then you could just be because like, because then you could just whoop. <laughs> yeah. Instead of having every yeah, everything. that's true. So Genie, the Disney Genie, is going to be something that is integrated into the My Disney Experience app. And it's going to be able to kind of help plan your itinerary. Um, from what I understand, you can be able to um, input some of your favorites and the things that you want to do, and then it will help calculate a time frame and a schedule. And then as you go throughout the day and things change, it will change with you so that you can be able to hit all those things that you wanted to do. Um, so you're not constantly like, okay, did we hit this? Did we hit this? Did we hit this? Um, it'll help you do all the thinking for you. If it says, um, if your itinerary has the Jungle Cruise on it, and you go on the Jungle Cruise, how's it gonna know you went on the Jungle Cruise? It's mm -hmm. not like when you use Fast Passes in your Magic Band, Literally. it like uh -huh. counted or yeah. like however it did. And so. Magic Bands had RFID chips in them so yeah. they could track you that way. Or like what would happen if like, oh, we're gonna go to Jungle Cruise, but on the way, this ride here, it, we like could just Like the Aladdin on. ride, you can just walk on. Yeah, and, and so then it'll be like, oh, you were supposed to do that later this afternoon, but. I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited to see what it's about. We usually do a lot of that prep planning before a trip. And so I'm curious to know if that's something that, that will enhance our trip or if that's something that we already have taken care of and we won't need that feature. Well, I think the, I think the Disney Genie will, I think it's just going to be very similar to the My Experience app. Yeah. The non-paid version of it. Yeah. I don't think it's really going to be much different. That's true. I mean, I think it might be a little bit different, but... I think the whole point of it and the change is for the Genie Plus. Mm. That's, I think, is the biggest. It's possible that the Genie is a little bit more user friendly, perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Um, but within this free option is Genie Plus, which is an additional fee, um, additional purchase. Yeah, so it's uh, $15 a day per person um at walt disney world mm -hmm. and at disneyland it's twenty dollars per day per person um to make be able to make what used to be fast passes but now it puts you in the lightning lane mm -hmm. Wait. so i wonder if they'll have like the lightning mcqueen bolt i know <laughs> like Maybe. over like the <laughs> so fast passes um and max passes which were at disneyland no longer exist. Well, they never came back when the parks opened after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They were just kind of on hold with everything else. And this announcement basically said, okay, those are never coming back the way that we knew them. Here's the new system. Yeah. Um, and before max passes, you had to pay, right? Yeah. I can't remember if it was, it was like, like 10 or $15. It was like 10 or $15 per a person. day per person. Yeah. And that was at the Disneyland resort. Um, but the fast pass system at Disney World was never um, a paid feature. It was just included. Um, and you could be able to pick, they had three. different categories. You could pick three a day that you could pre-plan like weeks in advance. Yeah, at each um, park. And then once you used all three, then you could get one at a time throughout the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Like the paper fast pass system mm -hmm. that they used to yeah. have. Yeah. Um, but with this one, it's a little bit different. What it is is that if you pay for that option, you can be able to schedule um, a ride at the next available time. And then once you use that, then you can schedule a next one. So something that I thought was interesting, like if you think about it, um, one, what's one of the reasons why we would get it? 
to be able to go to some big e-ticket rides yeah. and have to wait in line. Because those are the longest lines. Exactly. Yeah. But like sometimes we've been to Disney World and Animal Kingdom where we get there and then Pandora's Flight of Passage is like already six hours. Yeah. You know, like at, at peak holiday times mm -hmm. and stuff. So this would be like, oh, this would be a time we'd want to get it. But if you do that and you go on and you schedule your next available time and it's six hours from that point, mm -hmm. that's half of your day that you can't use any fast passes for. Yeah. And so it's possible that you could be paying $15 a day per person. And like with our family of four, that'd be $60 a day for us to skip a long line for one ride, two rides, maybe. So it depends on what park you go to um, might be if you want to pay for it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, Animal Kingdom probably wouldn't be a park that we would not do for that us. for. No. Because, I mean... Cal so so likes Flight of Passage. It's good, but yeah, I'm okay. Um, that's kind of the only one. I mean, Everest, but Everest, Everest is never a long line. The line for Everest is never really long. I don't really know why that, that ride never has a long line. Like, I don't think I've ever waited more than like 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe. You go to like an rock, and, rock and Roller Coaster, it's like an hour plus. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I don't think it's that much. I mean, it's different, obviously, but it's a roller coaster. It works for me. It's one of my favorite rides. No, it works. But, but, but yeah, so I mean, when where would you need it? Safari gets long, so maybe you would want it for the yeah, safari. Yeah, but they have, they have so many trucks, though. I mean, it gets long, but... You go fast through the line. You go fast. So... But the point you, is... <laughs> yeah, the basically the point is, is you have to... Think you, about if it's worth it, because it might not be worth it for one of your days in a park. Yeah, especially for a, like we have, there's a family of four of us. I mean, that's, you're talking about 80 to $60 a day depending to do. Depending on Disneyland or Disney World. Uh, just depending on Disneyland or Disney World. When we go to Disney <laughs> World, we usually go long enough to go to the parks for at least two days each park. Yeah, at least two days a park. So you can do everything that you want to do in two days. And, mm -hmm. and probably highlights of some other ones mm -hmm. within those two days. So, like, for us, like, Disney World would be, would be pointless. I mean, for us, it would be pointless. Yeah, because it's like, oh, well, we don't want to wait in this long line. Or if we do, we're going to miss out on XYZ. Well, we can just put that in our, on our second day in this park. And when we went in February, um, they didn't have a fast pass system for anything. And I, I didn't even notice at all. Like, did you notice at all? I've always been under the belief <laughs> that I didn't like fast passes um, because I think it could help you in for one or two rides a day, but then it would hurt you the rest of the day because it made the standby line go by slower because the fast pass line, it wasn't like you would show up and then just walk on the ride. No. Sometimes you would still wait For 15, 20 minutes to get through that fast pass line because there were so many fast yeah. passes. And in every queue, there comes a point when both queues come together. Yeah, and then they and just they merge just them. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And so. And I, so I, I never, I never really liked the fast passes. It always, I always felt like it made me stand in line longer. I can't it. prove it. No. But I felt like that. And there were times when, um, like in, in, slower times when we had the fast passes and we could be like oh we want to go on this one next oh there's an available time in 20 minutes it's going to take us 20 minutes to get over there and then we could just do that for most of the afternoon and that was cool yeah but that's on the rare occasion that that was the case and when we were there in february the standby line which was the only line it just flowed freely i mean and i so i didn't feel like waiting wasn't it wasn't as big of a deal mm -hmm. so um well they're gonna go like they, I'm pretty sure they announced when Ratatouille opens in a couple of months that they're gonna do the reservation. Oh, the virtual queue. The virtual queue, right? And they do that with Rise of the Resistance right mm -hmm. now. Web um, Slingers. And Web Slingers. Um, and when Tron opens, they're gonna do that oh, with yeah, Tron. Oh, they're gonna do with Tron. So. I kind of like the virtual queue. I do. Than... I do too. But I'm. I'm pretty sure that. Um, the paid thing gets you in there. So you don't have to make a reservation. You can, that gets you on those rides. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look it up. I probably should have looked it up before we did. They may not have, I don't think they released information okay. about those ones. Because in addition to the Genie. But you'd be able to get those rides, right? So those would be rides that you would be like, oh, well I would want to yeah. get a fast pass for that. 
But if you can only ride that once and get the virtual queue, then it's like, okay, well, I can wait in line for the other ones. Yeah, I don't need to, to purchase all this. Yeah. And let's not undervalue the, uh, underestimate the value of having treats in line. Like, sometimes it's rough, but, like, one of our favorite things to do is when we're doing Jungle Cruise in Disneyland is we go to Bengal Barbecue, which is right across the way. We get, um, like, three or four different skewers, and then we go get in line, and then it's just really yummy. We mm -hmm. just, it takes us almost the whole, at least half the, the line to be able to eat it because you can't have it on the the ride itself and yeah. so and that and that prevents you know you could if you wanted if you're trying to ride a bunch of rides then instead of riding a ride and stopping to get something to eat sit down and eat it mm -hmm. you do it you know what i mean so you're able to just move on yeah, it's a way to kind of multitask to be able to get lots of treats yeah. in and be able to do all your rides too um I guess it just depends on the type of vacation that you want. If you want to like go and get everything, then maybe it's something to think about. But it's all dependent on what's available at the time. I mean, if there's a lot of people in the parks wanting to do the same thing, then you're going to have to wait a long time. Like when you would get the paper fast passes, you're know, like, and you'd come out and be like, oh man, it's at one o'clock. we got to figure out what to oh, do yeah. at one o'clock. Like, yeah, they run out at a certain point. Yeah, exactly. And so, so if you pay the fee and it's a busy day, you, you might you don't, look you, out on some of them. Yeah, so then it's like, well, what was the point of, of paying for it? This, obviously, this is one of the... Uh, with Disney, there's a lot of hot topics, right? <laughs> Where people are very passionate on... On their opinions. On their opinions yeah. on them. And so this can get people going. There are, are a lot of unhappy people about the that I can understand why yeah, I get it, it. it was a complimentary service and now it's not and there's a lot of people who don't understand why they switched and I don't I have guesses but I don't know why it switched Make either. Money. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, seriously. <laughs> why else? Touche, touche. To make that's, money. The, that's the only reason they're doing it is because they it's a it's a market that they feel like they can get more money and yeah, they're a like, business. They, well, yeah, they see, are a business. See, here's the thing. In all honesty, this is a, 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 a new paid thing, but it is optional. It you is You don't optional. have to do it. Yeah, you, you don't. You don't. And you can still go and have a fun time. Yeah, you can have a great time without it. In fact, there are many days, like we just said, that, that we would choose not to. Yeah. And that would be our optimal choice for our vacation. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it's a little bit more than a cash grab or a, a business weight because... Um, because you get a lot of these debates when they increase ticket prices too. Like the demand is just extremely high, and I think that's one of the reasons why they changed mm -hmm. their um, the pass holder system to the Magic Key um, system that is brand new for Disneyland. That tickets are going to be on sale this week, I believe. Twenty fifth, I believe. Uh huh. For for that new system, and they revamped the system um, at Disney uh, World, and I think it's just because. When you have a lot of people who want to do something, you have really high crowds, and that in and of itself is going to um, exclude people because you're going to fill up your park to capacity, and when it's full, then there's more crowds, it's longer lines, and people get grumpier. And so, mm -hmm. what's the natural thing to do with supply and demand is you have to level that out somehow. So well, yeah, and I and I think another big part of it is um, from just an efficiency standpoint. The, the, the more that you get people to plan, so now you True. get people to uh, have reservations. So now they know how many people are coming per day. Yes. So now they know how to, how to staff, uh -huh. right? And then as the Genie and Genie Plus start going, then they're gonna start noticing more trends at places, where people go, what people like more, and those different things, right? So then they can staff better, they can purchase food better, they can, you know what I mean? And so they're able to run their company um, more efficient, True. which then helps them and saves them money also. Genie Plus also works for experiences as well. So that can be interpreted a few different things. I mean, are they going to bring back Oh, um, fireworks and rides and fireworks, shows? Fireworks, yeah. shows, you know. You have Probably, because they had fast passes for those type of, well, not fireworks. They didn't no, use... but they had for parades and they had for shows. I uh -huh. mean, Festival of the Lion King, Nemo, those all had fast uh, passes. Beauty and the Beast that just mm -hmm. came back to um, Fantasmic. 
yeah, World, World of, Color, of Color, all of those, you needed to reserve your sp seating. No, basically. World of Color wasn't a fast pass. No, there was standby areas where no, you No, neither could. was Fantasmic. But if you wanted to get to a specific area to see it, you well, had to yes, go no, but there were, but at, at But at Disney World, they were fast passes. Yeah. Anyway, so experiences are going to be included in that. Also, they announced a new lightning, um, lightning lane pass. I'm not sure exactly how they call it, but it's something where you can just pay per ride. So instead of paying for the whole day experience, you can be able to be like, oh, well, I just want it for this ride. I want to go through the lightning lane on this ride or this one. And it's going to be for up to two um, rides per day that, that you choose to use this option. Um, but pricing completely varies and... Um, well, I don't think they've even... Re they, they haven't even said... They haven't, and I think it's going to vary depending on the ride that you pick. I think it'll depend on the season that you go to. Yeah, that's true too, because ticket pricing is that way mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I don't think it's going to be open to every single ride. I mean, I don't think no, they're going to no. allow you to buy a ticket to, like, It's a Small World. No, but it'll be for, like, Rise of the Resistance yeah. and... Like Smuggler's those, Run, yeah, a lot of those, those types of runs, um, yeah. the Mine Train, um, different things like that. But that's something to keep in mind for future information as those are released. Yeah. So If it were you and I before kids, I think it would absolutely mm -hmm. be worth it. Go yeah. down to Disneyland and, you know, mm -hmm. and just knock those out and use mm -hmm. that. You could do everything probably. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, we don't... Uh, now that you have kids, it's more time in Fantasyland, and it's those type of things. So where it's like, like the pace of our day and the purpose of our trip changes. Yeah. And so and so for us, it's not. For the most part, it's not going to be worth paying. Mm -hmm. Something else that comes with Genie Plus, aside from being able to reserve spots in line, is Disney Parks themed audio experiences, um, which sounds like it's similar to what um, they used to have, like way. Whoa, low. way back in the day. Like and, way low. Yeah. Uh, like we're 90s? talking almost like I don't. It may have started in the late '90s. I know it was happening at the beginning of the 2000s, but they had My Pal Mickey, and so essentially what you did was you walked around the park with this little stuffed animatronic Mickey, um, and when you went to different areas, he would like. Um, I can't remember if he started laughing, like giggling, or if he vibrated, but if you touched his hand, he would give you facts about uh, where you were at. Like, he would talk about the Tree of Life, or, you know, like cool. something, and sometimes he would tell you jokes. He would <laughs> remind you that um, a parade was starting oh. where you were at. It was, it was really cool, and you could buy outfits <laughs> to put him in, so like if you were at... Uh, uh, Animal, Animal Kingdom. Kingdom. You put them in a safari outfit. That's cool. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, we had one and we we did it a couple of times. Like it was really cool. So with this, um, it, I, I'm not sure how it'll work. Like if your phone will start vibrating, but it said that that Imagineers would start talking about um, possibly like rides, like how they designed it, like certain mm -hmm. facts about it, stuff, which it I think is really cool. It's probably a lot of the same technology that they use for. Um, the different like games that you can play in the park like you have mm -hmm. um the flags that you can find in epcot where you know you go a certain way and then you scan something you're like oh i'm here and then it does that you know what i mean you can go and be like oh yeah. is there something for here i can look it up and or like we scan like at galaxy's edge where we we play the games me and cal where you scan the things and you trade with people and you try to yeah maybe there's going to be like hidden qr codes all yeah, over the place you're like oh there's one right here let's scan it and see what it says yeah so that would be cool um, I would actually really, really like that. They also have with that um, unlimited um, photo pass downloads. Mm -hmm. So for Disneyland, for Disneyland. Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Yeah, that is cool because you'd be able to, you know, have a bunch of your photos. You know, you're paying for that, mm -hmm. and also um, they're gonna do some sort of like augmented reality type thing. Yeah, augmented um, uh, reality lenses for for Disney. your phones. And we watched a thing. I showed you that thing that's going to be on the Disney Wish where oh, yeah. you like go around with your phone and it can like shine things and make things happen. Yeah. So it's probably going to be a lot like Something that like too. That. So that could potentially be really cool too. Mm -hmm. So here's a question, right? I'm wondering, would it be possible for like one of us to go oh. and to put it on our ticket and we wouldn't use it to get through the 
the lightning lane, uh -huh. right? But we'd be able to listen to those things and we'd have unlimited downloads. Because for, the like, one person in our party yeah, could be able to do so it. So like at Disneyland, it'd be 20 bucks. Oh, that's... I don't know. I wouldn't say you're cheating the system, but I and that's a little bit of a workaround because you're using the Genie Plus for the other options. Um, $20 to have an unlimited photos passes at Disneyland, that's hands down. Like I'd pay that in a second. But it is $20 a day. So, I mean, that does add up if you have a longer stay. That's true, but it's a lot cheaper than $80 a day. That is true as well. So, so that... You, and know, then you know how many, how much... Uh, Toffee churro you could buy for Ooh. $80. Churro <laughs> toffee. Oh, man. You, you sold me on that one. Uh, <laughs> but that, you know, that oh, is... You could, buy like, you could buy like three years for the price of that. We don't need more years. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Abby would, would I'll buy them that. for Abby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um... So that that is a good yeah. workaround because you would you would be able to like, again enjoy all that. We don't know if that's how it works, like, but I'm just wondering. Although it probably doesn't, they probably figured that out. I don't know. Yeah. So that's our take on the new Disney Genie and the Genie Plus option that are going to be available. I think they said the fall. Yes. Fall. Yeah. Which they didn't would, give a specific date. No, they didn't give a specific date. Um, that there's. Which means there's obviously going to be more information released as, um, as things get closer. They like to do that. Disney likes to announce something and then they kind of trickle out more information leading up to Which it. Which I think is a little bit smart, especially when it's a change like this that you're going to have people that like it and people that don't like it. Yeah. It's kind of... It gives them an idea of reading the room. Yeah. Not that I don't think they would like cancel it. No. But... But it, you're like, oh, maybe this one detail will change before gives, we tell Yeah, it gives them an idea of what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. And allows things to, to settle because I think in general people don't like change. If things have been a certain way for a certain amount of time, what? You're changing it on me? You know, like a lot of people yeah. can get upset with recent Oh, hot take on change. I would like them to make uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle bigger. I'd be totally down with that. Mm. That would, you know how many people would freak out about that? It would be that's, so mad. That's Walt's park. Don't touch Walt's castle. No, make it bigger. It's, it's too it's small. pretty dwarfed. I mean, like you said, oh, look at the little castle. <laughs> yeah, no, there's that's a That's a hot take for you right there. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's why I should have done it at the end, just drop, Boom. throw that bomb out there and walk away. <laughs> yeah. We're losing subscribers. Ah. <laughs> or gaining. Or gaining. Let us know if you agree. There's more people like me out there. Probably. Not, not my mother. She just unsubscribed. <laughs> She just unsubscribed because of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, we could go on and on. Obviously, we enjoy talking about That's that. That's what we should, we should make a video of hot takes like that. Yeah, of like our opinions on the hot topics. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be a fun video. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, I hope that this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh -huh. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, we probably don't know the answers yet, but uh, as it rolls out more, we'll... At the very least, we enjoy talking yeah, about we'll it. Yeah, we'll talk about and, it. And, and, you know, is it going to be good? What's going to play out? We enjoy um, learning more about all the new things that are upcoming. There's tons of cool stuff for the 50th mm -hmm. that I really, really, really wish I was going oh, I to know. this year. Hopefully, we'll be able to next get to Next year, go. hopefully. Hopefully. Um, we'll go next year. Let's be honest. It's going to happen. <laughs> we don't know when, but we'll go. Yeah. Um... But until then, next time, bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh. <laughs>